This is the Veteran Patent Review. I have to say, I am quite excited for this review as I come from the one wheeling background and one wheels are actually built like tanks. They can fall off a cliff, they're gonna survive. We don't have that in the EC community until now. I truly think that this thing is gonna be able to take a beating off road, take a crash and still survive because it's all metal design. It makes it heavy, so the stair test. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Up and down, we'll see. We'll see. Coming from V13 and EX30 for the last two, I feel like this is gonna be light work, but let's find out. Already a smaller package. I can't wait for this. Let's get into it. Ow. Let's ride them, baby. Compared to the S22, it's still lacking a bit, but compared to ooh, its big brother, the Sherman S, I think it wins. It's not feeling as meditative as Bradley over there. So. The Sherman S does have 20 mil more travel, but this thing just feels more agile. We switched to two arms. There's no shame in this. I must say though, I'm riding the 62 pound version, about 190 pounds. I need, I need the bigger one. Oh, all right, gotta, gotta rub the Buddha belly for good luck. Do a little Buddha kiss. <laughs> uh, oh, the Buddha laps, oops. And by bigger wheel, I mean the 66 pounder, which will give me a little bit more Leeway, not too bad to carry once you two-hand it. Trying to get cheeky with the one-hander, you're in trouble though. I will say overall, I'm quite impressed. Woo! <laughs> this is the frunk test. I have high hopes. I think this is gonna be the one finally. Let's try it. It's so close. I think the kickstand's gonna be the deal breaker. Oh man, it's just the kickstand that's hitting. I'm gonna try out the way around. A few moments later. Unfortunately, it's not working. If it wasn't for this chonky kickstand, it would probably work. Now the kickstand is removable. I don't know, I kinda like a kickstand though, so. Front test, fail. Sometimes, drivers like to open their car doors really fast and we have to evade it. That's what this test is all about. If you need a bit more context as to how it works, click the link right there. Aside from that, let's get into it. Sorry, buddy. Mwah. Are you okay, bro? Are you okay? Let me see. Let me see. It's, it's, right. oh, it's going to be a goose egg oh, there. Uh, <laughs> uh. Bradley's going to hold the phone to get the speed so he knows exactly what it is when I pass in. You have to run with me a bit to keep the connection. 35.2! Oh, oh, you are 36! Point six, baby! Wow! Crushed all the tests. That's insane. This thing is maneuverable, like oh. a 16 inch, 16 inch wheel. Oh, nice job, nice job. Let's oh, go on you. to the, what's the next test? Dima, help us out here. Hey everybody, we're here with a veteran Patton and I'm gonna go over the build quality while Lukey here um, disassembles it so we can install the battery packs that we've been impatiently waiting on. We did have the battery packs in for the previous scenes if you didn't put the two and two together. It's hot in here. Yeah, Bradley, it is hot. <laughs> all right, so this thing is really impressive. It's all metal design. I, don't, I think it might be a first for a wheel to be com almost completely made out of metal. People are saying right. this is made out of cast iron. Yeah. Um, that's a rumor, it's not, or a troll or joking, I have no idea. It's, it's made out of aircraft grade 7071 aluminum alloy, and uh, that is quite nice. The Fast A suspension is the same as the Sherman S, but it does have 20 millimeters of less travel because of the smaller size. So if you're a heavier rider, you're gonna be doing big drops and jumps, I would go to the 66 pound suspension instead of the 62, just to, because it has a little bit less travel. Um, these handlebars are quite nice. They really protect most of the wheel. Same with this jump bar, which is removable, and the kickstand, which is extremely sturdy. Um, not to mention the pedals. They're quite nice. They're very, very grippy. They do have this teeth system here that uh, we're not sure if they'll last in the, in the long run. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite impressive. It doesn't come with pads. You can buy Sherman's or Veteran's own pads, but we are including a set of these foam ones. They're actually quite nice. They work well with the jump pad and those are coming with any purchase that's made on our website. The trolley handle on this thing, 
pretty decent. It's sturdy. It's not all awkward like the Begode RS is, considering it's at the back of the wheel, so still balanced. Now the battery pack, this is what makes this thing special because Veteran has never done more than 100 volts. This is 126 volt using Samsung 50E battery cells. The only downside is they haven't followed a motion suit or a King Song suit and added smart BMS to this. So you can't monitor the individual battery cells. It's not a deal breaker, but you know, better than nothing. This 3000 watt motor will deliver a ton of power. You can go up to 70 kilometers an hour. What the heck are you? Okay, first of all, you're naked, but second of all, we're about to do the coffee test. Why are you drinking an energy drink when we're about to, to do the coffee test? Innovation it's takes right. caffeination, man. Come on, <laughs> this is so... gonna be hard work. Have you seen the coffee cradler? Flashback. Aaron, 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 Aaron. Yeah. Okay, you know how I'm building the coffee cradle system for the coffee test? Yeah. I need your help, man. I have 20 things to do for this montage. If you can just collect for me the highest quality materials we have in the shop, lightweight, strong, I'm talking carbon fiber, magnesium, titanium, graphene, whatever we have, bring it to my desk. That'd be great. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Behold, the finished product. The coffee cradler's rigid unibody construction allows for maximum stability while not giving up any comfort or style. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> oh, we're here. We're here and we're with the coffee cradler. We had some problems with Gen 1, but they're all fixed, baby. We're gonna put the coffee in here. We've weighed it before on a scale, mathematical. I'm gonna go ride it around. I'm gonna have a microphone in my hand, but I'm not gonna have a coffee in my hand. It's gonna be right here, uncomfortably close to my face <laughs> as I test out the patent. And I'm gonna get absolutely covered in pretty hot coffee. Hot enough to cause me discomfort, not hot enough to burn my skin and disfigure me. We weigh it before, we weigh it after. The difference between is the score we get. Let's find out how it goes on this inaugural coffee cradler test. I'm so excited. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, coffee test. Coffee test. Stay strong. Stay strong. Oh. Oh god. lost a lot at the end there. Oh, we lost a good chunk at the end. Overall, in my opinion, a resounding success here for our inaugural coffee cradler test. I look good, I rode good, the coffee only burned a little bit, lost about half a cup. We'll show you the measurements here. And pretty shocked, the patent got most of the coffee on it, as you can tell. We're gonna do some, some alpha beta adjustments, move that up so I get a bit more on, on me next time, but very pleased, I think next, we hit the track. And we're back with my crazy helmet hair at the Richmond race track. As you can see, clearly abandoned. We're gonna test out the speed of the patent, see how it compares to the EX30. We're not doing a speed test because everybody kind of knows this top speed of this is already over 70 kilometers an hour. One thing to quickly note is I'm wearing a Predator helmet. This is meant for downhill longboarding. It's not exactly meant for racing at high speeds. That's right, Bradley. So. Yeah, that's, what, what do you have to say right. about that, Lucas? <laughs> well, word has it, Bradley, that Predator is coming up with a DOT-approved helmet in about six to nine to ten months-ish. Yeah, in about nine months, I think, yeah. you said. Uh, it'll be a little bit thicker than this one, of course, but we'll have that Predator helmet that everybody loves in a more safe format for racing and going high speeds. Which you should, of course, always wear if you're planning to race. And speaking of high speeds, let's take this thing on the track. Okay, you know we do the three, two, one normally? Toot, toot, toot. Yeah. We just think of Backstreet Boys all day? Yeah. Let's do on Rock Your Body. Okay. Yeah. Okay, right. Everybody, yeah, yeah. Rock your body, yeah. 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 I need the flag. 
good boy. Uh, do we have, do we have the flags? Uh, no. Huh? Ah, I'll be right back. Lucas, why are you always naked? It just happens, man. All right. Woo! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This thing was fast. I'm really impressed with how this thing performed on the track. And it's a big knobby tire. If it had a street tire, whew. Coming around those corners, you have lots of pedal clearance, so I was able to lean really hard. Very, very fast acceleration. I could get up to about 60 kilometers an hour before taking that first tight turn. And I just felt so comfortable on this. Um, more comfortable than any wheel I've taken on the track so far. And I think I beat the EX30's time. Yes, you did. You got 102.1 <laughs> on the EX30 after many tries and 100.85. Yeah. One minute, 0.85 Almost seconds. two seconds. Yeah, that's that's One cornering, a bit. baby. That's um, how Red Bull won their championships I'm too. I'm pleased with that. So, uh, man, that was fun. That was good. Yeah, I think uh, we should probably go do some uh, brakey tests next. and. I want to do another microphone transition, so come here, <laughs> come here, come here. Oh, 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 you can't stop it, you can't stop it. <laughs> transition, and you know what time it is, baby. It's the brake test on the veteran Patton. <sighs> that was hard. I'm gonna go from 25 kilometers an hour down to zero as quickly as I can. I am then going to proceed to go 50 kilometers an hour and stop as quickly as I can again. I'm gonna compare it to all the other wheels we've done, and we will continue to do so. And that's really it. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it. Oh. You're on the line. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, that was impressive. You beat the freaking EX30. Yes, sir. I honestly am, am pretty surprised. I'm a big wheel boy. I feel way more confident on them. I'm also a big pad boy. And these are Evie's pads that are actually coming included with every patent that you purchase. Oh, you wouldn't think a 16 inch wheel uh, would break that well, but it really it's, did perform well. Yeah. When we were on the hills the other day too, I was, when I'm coming down the super steep hill, yep. I done that hill on the EX30 and the V13 and they both felt really confident braking. Yeah. This thing just as confident. So I was really impressed with the brakes on this. Speaking, uh, of, speaking steep of steep hills, uh, yes. We thinking the same thing. Let's, go. <laughs> Let's go do cardiac hill and test the overheat. Okay, I gotta say, this is one of the torquiest, if not possibly the torquiest wheel I've ever rode. It, it's going up this effortlessly, even easier than the EX30. Maybe it's because it's a smaller package and the, and the smaller rim size. Um, I started at just under 20 degrees Celsius, 19.8, and I think the peak temperature I hit was 26, maybe just over 26 degrees Celsius, so only a six degree increase. I think that's the best heat dissipation we've ever had on Overheat Hill, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, I actually did it a second time, this time going fast. I just wanted to show everybody that it doesn't really make much of a difference. Like, there's not many a, a point of really doing it fast. Uh, the second time doing it fast, I was at about 24 degrees Celsius at peak, starting at 20. So it was a four degree increase instead of a, a two. So it's much harder on the motor to go slower. So we're gonna continue to do the cardiac hill test going slower. All right, light test time. <laughs> Let's go. Let's do it. We're here exactly 201 inches away from the wall with the Luxo meter. We're gonna test how bright this light is. Will it beat the Sherman Max? Will it beat the B13? Let's find out. How bright is this oh. light? All right, so we're at 535 lux. Um, I'm not getting blinded either. You, you can also adjust the height, which is kind of nice, and the spread is pretty decent. Uh, about, what, about 50 inches, just over four feet, so not bad at all. It's not as good as the Sherman Max brightness-wise, not good as the V13, of course, but it's better than the EX30. It's a decent light, it'll get you around it in the dark. Dipped in in diamonds, so do you find it appealing? Time for dealing, despite y'all dealing. Ooh, baby! Oh. The Patton. <laughs> Can I talk about the range test first? Get it. So yeah, I could get 70 kilometers an hour uh, at full battery, 
but when I was down to about 70%, I was getting beeps at 65 kilometers an hour, and that kind of concerned me thinking it was gonna deteriorate a lot more after that, but it didn't really. At 50%, I was beeping at 56 kilometers an hour. At 10 to 30%, I was beeping around 51 to 53 kilometers an hour, and then once I hit below 10% battery, that's when it finally dropped to about 30 to 35 kilometers an hour, I was getting beeps. But at 11, 12%, I was still going to 50%, so it really just dropped at about 10% battery. And I went a total of uh, 65 kilometers, and it was freaking cold today. It was seven degrees Celsius, very, very windy. So that if you were under normal riding temperatures and normal riding conditions, I would expect to get at least 15% more battery. So expect this wheel to get around 75 kilometers per charge, and I'm 180 pounds with gear give you an idea and I was riding pretty quick uh, anywhere between 30 to 65 kilometers an hour but majority I think my average riding speed was 33 kilometers so um, with some quick accelerations yes yes it was uh, is he's not trying to preserve battery it's an important thing yeah I'm doing. riding it like I want to have fun with the wheel and You're... ride as as hard as I can essentially yes. um, I gotta say the tire profile it's so yeah. nice and rounded and I really like how it leans into turns, and I think that's why I did so well in the speed test, the, the track test, because it just turns so nice, so nimble, yep. but yet still so, so stable. And the torque that you have under your feet, it's so effortless. And I'm saying this, and I mean it, I'm pretty sure this is the torquiest wheel I've ever rode. And like, it's like the EX30 was already like next level, yep. but because this is a 12 inch rim and it's a smaller yeah. wheel, you, it's so effortless to accelerate. So I think hands down, Torquius wheel. I mean, it performed really well in overheat. And I would say if I could only buy one wheel and I could only own one wheel, oh, this would be it. And as long as you don't need a wheel with uh, like long range, if you want to go 100 kilometers plus, get the Sherman S. But if you don't need that, and uh, you don't need to be cruising over 60 kilometers an hour the whole time or 70 kilometers an hour and you're okay with cruising around 55, 50 from, for the whole battery. Save a little bit of scratch. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, this is the wheel and it's my new favorite. It's gonna say that it is. And I rode the S22 Pro today just to make sure and I still, yeah, it's my new favorite. Can you guys guess which one I'm still partial to? <laughs> Quick, uh, you know, chime in. Also love it. Still S22 for my specific needs. Slightly edges it, but it, I'm right behind you, man. Yeah. I'm right behind you. Did, it's, you notice how easy it is to ride? Like yeah. it was. Remember us on the trails? My yeah. Atlanta, It's one man. of the easiest wheels to ride. You've never seen me ride trails like that. Like I was hitting all the Bro was big ripping, stuff I could man. find. Bro was ripping. And if you're like going slow and there's a big stump there and you're going too slow and no other wheel would make it, but this thing, it'll just, it'll it, it'll go from zero to enough power to get up anything. Yeah. I was climbing stumps and it was just glorious. I thought these were gonna be quite uncomfortable. I, it, it, you know, and I, kinda, I remember leaving and being like, ah, shnikes, we forgot to put some padding under this. That's gonna hurt all day. Didn't even notice it, didn't even notice it. And I'm a, I'm a locked in pad maxi and Bradley's quite opposite. And I thought like, oh, just with our kind of pads that come for free with the purchase of any pad from Evie's. Uh, but they're quite grippy on jeans, plus this hooking my toe in, I'd still like, would like a, a pair of locky Grizzlies, pads on, Grizzlies yeah. on it, but I wasn't left desiring it over and over. You know what I mean? It was, it was enough for sure. A couple, I mean, uh, couple other little things, mm -hmm. uh, kickstand. I think it's the best kickstand I don't know, any, any we haven't poke tested it yet. Let's well, no, no, poke test it would have been uh, oh, right. <laughs> as we were talking yes. about it. Oh, yeah. Yes, of course. <laughs> Post production. Thank you, Dima. Yeah. <laughs> um, a couple bones to pick as well. Ooh, I got a bone. Uh, there's a slight squeak. Now, if you watched our ASMR video, some some of you commented, "Oh, there's a squeaky sound mm. when you." And I thought we couldn't really replicate it in the store, but once I took it for a ride, when you're at speed. It was squeaking. I reached out to Veteran, asked them about it. They said it's normal. It's the bearing cover making noises, but it doesn't affect performance, doesn't affect anything. It's normal. We will let you know once we do the teardown to see if there's any funny business going All right, on. We'll but see what's normal. It doesn't seem like anything's wrong. The foot pedals as well, extremely grippy. I love these stock pedals. They're some of the best stock pedals I've used. 
particularly on these shoes. These are trail shoes. And they're grippy. I was like, like almost stuck. Oh, 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 boy, they were it was extra grip. Last bone to pick is the tire change. It's going to be a bolts, bit of a bitch. Bolts, 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 it's a bolts, lot of bolts, bolts and screws. Luckily, majority of them are the same size. So thank you, veteran, for just using all these big boys. They are pretty hard to strip. Um, maybe there's an easier way. Stay tuned for our teardown video. We usually do it first, but we wanted to get some mileage on this first to see if there's any weird wear and tear spots. But overall, very good. We kind of rambled more than normal, but we had a lot to talk about. Great wheel, the best wheel. I was going to do, do a Trump impression, but <laughs> it's I, the best band. No. I can't do it. Trump. It's the best. It's no. <laughs> I've never really tried. The best wheel. Oh, fuck. Um, yeah, what do you guys think? Are you excited? Are you? Is it not enough? Is it too much? Da, 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 da. Like, comment, subscribe. Mostly comments. Let us know. Yeah, a lot of work goes into this. Yeah. Not really on Luke's and I's part. It's yeah. all Dima, the Especially guy behind the me. camera, right there. B camera. <laughs> Thank you, Dima, but uh, he puts a lot of effort in this, so if not for us, give him a like and subscribe. Yeah, but our also channel. for us. But also his channel. Hoto, Hotorel. 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 I don't care. It's going in the, <laughs> going in the fucking description, Dima. Oh, we've got a nice sale. Thank you, whoever just bought a wheel from us at 8.52 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. All right. You. It's a 12-hour day. Let's get out of here. Yeah, mate. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> we are the savages. We are the savages. The savage. The savage. The savages. We are the savages. We are the savages.